Tell me about your childhood. I was born in Tame, and then my mother and father moved to Headington, just outside Oxford. I went to work in various places around Oxford, and then in 1943, I joined the WAFs. And I was eventually stationed in Abingdon, where I met Leslie, who was training navigators and teach lecturing navigation. Can you remember where you met her, that first meeting? Yes, that was, uh, that was going out with these few friends of ours and going to the, uh, the local. And what was your memory of your husband on, on that first meeting? Well, actually, um, he was Welsh. And I said, uh, I don't really like Welsh people. <laughs> but I was completely wrong. Um, completely wrong. Was it difficult to court when you were both in the services? Well, uh, he was an officer and he, he um, uh, was living just a little while outside the camp where I was on the camp and I had to sign in every night by half past ten. So, uh, you know, he, we, I had to go wherever we went. We had to be back to, for me to go to the camp by half past ten. That makes courting a bit difficult there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's still quite fun. What was it like for both of you to come back to Wales? Well, for you to come back to Wales, Leslie, and for you to arrive in Wales? I don't know. I think I think I felt uh, that we were lucky in some way, well, ways because coming to the farm and that, we you had plenty of food, making butter and so on, and uh, and in fact, uh, certain pleasure that some of my mother's friends and that we supplied them with butter and so on. And uh, we were well, a nice that, little crowd was, in the village. That was one thing that I, I found absolutely amazing when I came to Brecon. Living in Oxford, my mother would queue for hours for a bit of meat or something, and very often she'd get to the counter, sold out, run out to this. And then I came down to the mill. There was bacon and egg for breakfast. There were rabbits, which people used to love in those days. You could have roast rabbit and all that sort of thing. Chickens, which were very, very expensive when I was a girl. The chickens were bought on high days and holidays, not like today. The first winter I was there was 1947 when everybody was frozen <laughs> and we got snowed in and the battery ran out of the wireless and all those sort of things. How did you manage? How did you cope? Oh, we coped. Yes, we coped. It must have been very tough. It was very different, I must say. Yeah, very different. <laughs> it was terrible, really, <laughs> wasn't it? We had snow up to the top of the hedges, virtually, yeah. and uh, the lorries who came to collect the milk uh, couldn't get there. You can all pull the plug out, it's about the only thing you could do. Uh, so there he was, wasting a heck of a lot of milk. Uh, <laughs> a lot of income? Yeah. A hard winter. Yeah. Very hard winter. That uh, 1945 was worse because um, you didn't have the tractors, you didn't have the cars or anything. It was all just moving the snow with a spade. What was, uh, what was Brecon like when you used to come into town? I used to come in like all the farmer's wives on a Friday. And I was telling my grandsons today, one always wore a hat on Friday market day. <laughs> was it a friendly place? Oh yes, I found it very nice. There were lots of shops there, draper's shops and, and different shops from now. 
particularly on a Tuesday and Fridays, seem to be the market days. And uh, you had crowds of people then uh, when they moved the market outside the Brecon. It became a Della town, really. Awesome. Tell me about Thursday, what happened on Thursday? Well, I was quite bewildered by it all, really, but the children from Main Street School came to sing to me, and they sang in English and then in Welsh, and they were very good. And uh, I was um, given a present by the mayor and by the um, Mr. Gareth Radcliffe. From Powers came, Council? Came to Council, yes. Gave me a very nice gold kite, which apparently isn't given to many people. Indeed. You did this two plus years ago, didn't you? You had your hundred. Yes. Oh, not, not as elaborate as that, I can assure you. <laughs> so come, the question that lots of people would be wondering is, what's your secret for such a long and clearly good life? I could say hard work, but I better not. <laughs> but uh, no, I. Uh, I think I've be always been terribly busy, and Joyce will agree, I'm sure, in that she looked after the the farm with the boys working there. I th I doubt whether there's many people in Brecon served on as many committees and that as I did. About a dozen, I expect. So Joyce, if your husband's secret is hard work, what's your secret to long life? Well, I had to do it if he wasn't there. <laughs> so. <laughs> but I think it was because we we lived in harmony, really. Um, I did the what I, I was needed to do. And um, no, we got along so well that it... Uh, I think that was, and also we happened to be lucky with our uh, health. Probably the fresh air outside, <laughs> working outside. Leslie Joyce, thank you so much for your time. It's been a privilege speaking to you both. Thank you.